World Sidecar. This is the fourth round of the World Sidecar Championship from Silverstone in Great Britain. We have a lot of action-packed uh, excitement for you today. Some great weather as well for the Sidecar Championship. Uh, just forming up on the grid there, you can see the heat haze and uh, the paddock. The, a slight wind blowing, you can see on the flag there. Fourth round of the championship. So far, we've been to Valencia with Webster winning, Monza with Klaffenbach winning, and Oschersleben two weeks ago with another Webster win. Everything's set today. We've had some great qualifying, uh, fairly exciting uh, qualifying so far. Hanks today, now there was a problem. Uh, went upside down in the final qualifying, and he's rebuilt the fairing, got it all back together, and should be on the grid. We'll look for him in a minute. Fair crowd here too uh, so far around the track. The uh, circuit has a new chicane towards the end there, just out of Luffield, and uh, we'll have a look at that through the warm-up lap. Circuit record, none, because last year uh, it was obviously the old track, but uh, Abbott and Biggs had a win last year. Norman Burgess, how are you this afternoon? Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, the weather is tremendous. I mean, we're looking today at an absolute immense race. I mean, we're chasing championship points now. Weather, fine. 36% humidity and the track temperature. That's pretty high for Silverstone. 44 degrees. Uh, air temperature, 25 degrees. This is not England weather, is it? No, Rob. I'll tell you where we are. We're in the south of France or Spain or somewhere. But the weather, I just can't describe to you. I've gone the bright red. Uh, the, the, the temperature, the track temperature, if we're not going to have tyre problems, I don't think. I think everything is working perfectly today. Yes, the heat haze there. That could be a bit of an issue with uh, with tyres towards the, uh, the end of the race. We'll get to that later. Webster and Woodhead on pole. Webster's 22nd pole in a row. How about that for a statistic? 22nd pole. It is unbelievable. I mean, 22nd, he is looking for the World Championship again. Abbott and Biggs second on the grid with Steinhausen and Hopkinson. Hanks with the rebuilt machine, fourth place. Uh, Klaffenbach and Parts. Uh, Claffy reckons he's got the Webo killing suspension settings in place. Van Gils, the Dutch team, they've been racing a lot lately. Two races last weekend, they're all set. Rosher and Harney, and then Skeen and Miller in eighth place. Uh, they're going pretty well, and uh, they're looking for a solid result, Jock was saying earlier today. Row five, Bill Philp and Yoda Yendel, uh, followed by Gatton Randall. They fixed all their electrical problems, hopefully. Had some awful trouble at Oshersleben. And then Morrissey and Harper. Morrissey, the most improved this year, we've had to say. Menge and Badolt on uh, the next row there. And Peach and Tomlinson, row seven. Andy Peach, not happy with the 14th place. He was up to ninth in qualifying on Friday, but uh, he's going to get there. Two wild cards on row eight. Henry and Wilson and Woodard and English. Good qualifiers there. They're wild cards, local English guys, and uh, come to have a go at the World Championship. I'm sure uh, uh, Duncan Henry will not uh, appreciate you calling him an English man, but yeah, Duncan has come in from Scotland uh, as, as a wild card, struggled through. Wow. There he is, Steve Webster, eight times world champion, Steve Webster, MBE. And that's Sarah, Miss Superside, on the grid there. Excellent to see uh, such quality girls. Look at the cool Steve Webster. He's got Miss Superside there, and he's still smiling, still taking the sun in. Yes, of course, relaxed. He's done this uh, so many times. Uh, Steve Webster, over 180 starts in Grand Prix, and uh, so he's been doing this since, what, 1984? Yeah, 84, he's, he's, that was his first Grand Prix, actually, at Silverstone. We've actually come the full circle, and this is his first uh, first and definitely not his last Grand Prix. Steve was here in 1984, yeah, his first Grand Prix. Abbott and Biggs, the world champions, just having a word there with the owner of uh, World Sidecar, Bernd Steinhausen. And, uh, yeah, we pick up Steve. He'll be just having a drink, having a relax. You've got some inside information on them? Uh, yes, uh, Steve, Ab uh, Steve Abbott, the wily Derbyshire Fox there. He's, uh, he's just putting his ear defenders in at the moment. Uh, he'll take it cool. Take lots of liquids on bef before uh, the start of the race, and there you see the outfit. Got his helmet there, keeping it cool out of the sun. And you can see Jamie there. Jamie stood out in the sun. He's a, he's a fair-haired sort of a bloke, is Jamie, and he, he generally keeps out of the sun uh, because a lot of effort going to go into this uh, race, I'm sure. 
Yes, more than last year. Last year we had a patchy track, a bit of wet from a few showers during the day. A few of the teams struggled with traction. Some of the teams tr struggled to keep their engines uh, in control. But uh, we've seen a few engines, uh, engine failures this year too. The Suzuki's don't seem to be faring too well. No, the, the Suzuki's, they've one or two. Always when there's a temperature, everybody's going to have a problem because the machines are running so hot. But I think this uh, Grand Prix, Rob, we're going to have tyre problems. We're going to see mid-race. I'm predicting that mid-race, uh, we're going to see the Tom Anxies of this world. Tom, who puts rubber down everywhere, he's going to have his problems. Uh, and I think uh, the tyre war is going to be at its best here at this, with these track temperatures. OK, I'm going to pick you up on that uh, tyre problems thing here, Norman. Um, been talking with Malcolm from Yokohama, and uh, he's saying that the Japanese people have have heard your commentary and they say tyre problems is not the problem it's the right hand action of the driver and or suspension problems so I'm, I'm picking you up on that right now yeah thanks a lot on that one Rob but yeah absolutely I mean the more that you use the right hand the more that you're going to wear the tyres out it's dead simple and I think with these temperatures there with number five but at these temperatures you'll find that the gentleman with the uh, gentle right hand is going to be the winner Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs there had a problem into turn one in final qualifying. They did three laps into lap four and turn it upside down. I was there, sir, and you should have seen the uh, the speed that they went into that right-hander. And yeah, Tom was uh, looking for a, a good fast lap, obviously, and he just spun and spun and spun. Then at the last minute, unfortunately, it flipped over. But uh, no injuries to either either member of the crew, and yet yeah, very little. Uh, uh, problems with the machine and yeah they're out there and I think we're going to see some action today from Mr Hanks. Championship leaders Klaffenbach and Parzer. Parzer uh, fairly relaxed through the weekend. He was here on Tuesday doing his preparation and uh, has been uh, up to his usual uh, peak physical fitness. Yes again Mr Par Parzer I can't comment too much on Christian because because of, of what it actually does for a living and the rest of it. But, yeah, I'm sure that Christian will be in peak physical fitness and uh, I think Klaus Klaffenbach has a point to prove. Yes, well, he leads the championship by 21 points at the moment and uh, although fourth in the championship, uh, they're the smiling Adolf Harney uh, with Mike Rocha this year. They've had some great results and fourth consistently, uh, now fourth in the championship. Adolf is the hardest man in sidecar racing. He has more injuries uh, than a, an A&E uh, uh, accident ward in an hospital because Adolf is a real tough man of uh, sidecar racing. And yes, just a mere broken arm or any of them problems, not a problem to Adolf. And that's a fair call coming uh, from you there, Norman. A uh, hard man of sidecar racing, Trevor Hopkinson. How many times did Jörg spit him out uh, last year and the year before? And he got back on every time. Uh, we've had uh, Trevor... Crone as well with Hautzenberger and, and you're calling uh, Adolf Harney the hard man. Yeah, sidecar men, uh, especially the passengers, are, are all tough characters and uh, yeah, if, if we just happen to have a mere spin, they'll be back on tomorrow. Okay, the warm-up lap now. Bikes just going gently away from the line. Of course, uh, we've had some clutch problem, problems away from the start in the last couple of races, so everyone will be going very, very gently away on this warm-up lap. Yeah, what we're going to see on this warm-up lap, uh, uh, to some people it's a formality, but with the warm-up lap, it's a very, very important and integral part of the race. Uh, it, sends the t it warms the tyres up, it warms the engines up, it warms the passengers up, and it warms the drivers up. And they, they, they're sighting everything. You'll see them weaving about, they're warming the tyres up, etc., uh, etc. Et As you see in Formula One, uh, they're warming the tyres up. Everything is, at this moment in time, come. It needs heat. Yes, and then they get to the start line and everything is at peak temperature. The machines at the start will then sit there for an extra minute or two, getting too much heat possibly into the radiators and into the engine. So Steve Webster, we'll see what he does when he comes round, but uh, he's a master of starting from pole position. 22nd in a row today. Yeah, I'll tell you what happens with Steve Webster. You'll see him just before the uh, start finish. Steve will, will pull up your thing. Blimey, he's got a problem. But what he's actually doing is waiting for the rest of the field uh, to catch him up. And then he's not on the start line too long because, of course, we don't have fans or anything. They're just onto the uh, start line. They're keeping the engines running. And uh, obviously, temperature at this stage on the start line is, uh, is very critical. But you'll see Steve 
uh, long time world champion he will pull up and he'll let everybody else catch him up also the stop start nature of the final chicane uh, will be causing havoc with the clutches Klaus Klaffenbach in fact has had to replace his clutch after the final qualifying because uh, well basically it uh, stopped working yeah believe it or believe it not Rob they use the clutch once and that is for a start and that, that is where the problems sometimes arise uh, where they have a false start or whatever they send them around on another lap and uh, then the clutch is actually surplus to requirement once once they've dropped the clutch and set off uh, they don't use it anymore uh, but if they have to use it again it always creates a problem sure and uh, gearboxes uh, these machines using a fairly close ratio gearbox uh, some of the teams using standard but undercut gears other teams using a uh, special gearbox in there so first gear is very tall and close to the remainder of the gears rather than a road bike uh, the standard gearbox which uh, has a, a user-friendly first gear yeah they uh, use very high first gear and uh, hence the reason they have to use the clutch to get off the line and they use it once and uh, this is what actually causes problems uh, with the with the start if they don't get away cleanly first time uh, there is a clutch problem that's Chris Founds and Heidenreich, uh, new passenger for him. Stuart Muldoon, of course, uh, having uh, some problems halfway through the season, uh, but helping Chris out for the first few races. And uh, Frank Heidenreich is uh, filling in for the remainder of the season. If we'd have been here next, last year, Stuart Muldoon would be up with the front runners as a driver. Uh, Stuart was racing Grand Prix last year, uh, decided to take a year out, uh, got involved with uh, Chris Founds, and here he is again as a passenger. And his passenger from last year, Andy Peach, is uh, qualified 14th as a driver. All very confusing, Rob. Well, look at that heat haze as they form up for the grid. Steve Webster just slowing the field down. Looks like everyone uh, has come round on that sighting lap. Uh, pace car just pulling the remainder of the machines out of that final chicane where we'll see a fair bit of action on the end of the first lap and I predict towards the end of the race as well. I'll tell you what it is, I'm looking through the commentary position now. We could be anywhere in the world, the weather is fantastic. We've got a full grid of sidecars, there's going to be a fantastic race in a minute and it's looking wonderful, Rob. Yes, passengers just standing up there, uh, Paul Woodhead at the start of the field, usually stands up, has his last stretch for uh, 16 laps and then uh, gets himself into position puts that uh, left hand onto the hand grip where he won't really remove it for much of the race and sets himself. Red lights on the screen and red lights out. Webster doesn't get a good start. Abbott and Steinhausen go side by side around him and into turn one I think it's going to be Steinhausen from Abbott and that's Hanks in third place. Great start from Hanks. Round the outside is Webster and then Klaus Klappenbach in sixth place I'm sure. Steinhausen leads away from the start into the Beckett's and Maggots complex for the first time. Steinhausen away. Oh, Tom Hanks is full of aggression. Tom has been full of aggression all weekend. Tom Hanks has got a point to prove this weekend. And there he is in second place, third place, Steve Abbott. Yeah, so everyone tidily away, so they've got past that uh, position where Tom Hanks had that big crash in the final qualifying only hours ago. I'll tell you what we're going to see here, Rob. I'm, pr I'm predicting that we're going to see Steve Abbott stop, sat behind uh, Tom Hanks. He's going to watch him wear all the rubber off his tyres and then he's going to make a move about two-thirds of the way through the race. Well, the leading two need championship points. Webster putting a move on Abbott there into the Vale. Steinhausen needs championship points. Hanks hasn't had a uh, very good start to the season with the first two DNFs. And Look at that, Tom Hanks going through the right hander there. He's putting rubber down. Tom Hanks is doing what he normally does in British Formula 2 Championship, putting rubber down, plenty of acceleration, plenty of action. Klaffenbach under Abbott into Abbey. And now under the bridge, the first three have a bit of a break. And Van Gils is in sixth place there, looking to stay with Abbott. He was chasing him through qualifying at lunchtime today. Steinhausen leads, Hanks second. Klaffenbach and Parts are in third. In fourth place after Webster, Abbott and Van Gills, fifth and sixth. Here we go into the first chicane, uh, final chicane for the first time. Hanks out of, well, out of most people's control. Very, very tight le uh, left-hander, very, very tight right-hander. And then open the taps onto the main straight. 
for the first time. We're going to watch Tom Hanks here. He's going to, he's got a point to prove us, Tom. He uh, had a small problem of uh, turning it over in the qualifying, but I think Tom there, with all his sponsors, all these uh, people that, uh, friends and family, Tom has got a point to prove, and we're going to see some action from that young gentleman from Birmingham today. Through Maggots, then Beckett's, and then through Chapel, Klaus Klattenbach, Christian Parzer. The team that have been together, uh, except for a couple of years there, since Klaus Klattenbach started, the Austrians, world champions in 2001, and they've caught up to Webster. They've closed the gap that was existing between the leading three and the chasing fourth, fifth, and sixth. This is Sakai Racing at his best, Rob. Are you looking at Steve Webster? You're always looking at Steve Webster and waiting for him to make a move. But Tom Hanks has got him a, at the moment, and uh, I think Steve will be happy for a, a, just a draft at the moment. Yes, watch Hanks out of the right-handers. You see a lot of power understeer off that front tyre, and the machine just looks like it's going to miss the apex, and then at the last minute he gathers it up and gets through. Yeah, Tom running hard, uh, Yokohama's, uh, for this meeting, and, uh, yeah, he's decided that hard tyres are going to be the way. This is... He's telling us that this is going to make him last for the uh, for the for the duration of the race, but I doubt it. The way that man drives. Yes, well, here's the move from Webster. Doesn't make it. Oh, that's uh, surprising from Webster. That's uh, around the back of the circuit through Priory in, into Brooklands. Webster can't get by Hanks. Very, very encouraging for Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs there on the number five Houghton Fabrications entry. Yeah, what Steve Webster doing there is actually showing his nose and. Uh, uh, just telling Tom that he's actually there. Uh, as you can see, he's dropped back a little bit there, but you, you'll see Steve Webster in a minute. He'll be again. That was Steinhausen on the grass out of the last chicane. <laughs> Steinhausen with the, the car park route, as it's called. <laughs> yeah, York Steinhausen. Again, another young gun, as, as per Tom Hanks. Uh, lots of action uh, and still saving his tyres, as you can see. Yeah, well, he'd be saving his tyres on the grass, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. OK, the leaders there, uh, a tight bunch of four. And then Abbott, 1.4 seconds behind them. And Van Gils, Jock Skeen in seventh place. Bill Philp in eighth, Rocha. And the British champion, Richard Gatt, in tenth place. Yeah, well done, Gatt. I mean, tenth place in this uh, company is very good. Klaffenbach with the fastest lap, a 2.017. I think that is very, very close to his qualifying time. So Claffy has been uh, keeping something over his sleeve. Yeah, Claffy will do. Uh, Claffy's not showing all his cards in this uh, meeting, I'll tell you now. Claffy is hungry for the World Championship again. Well, leading by 21 points at the moment, Klaus Klaffenbach. And, uh, yeah, was saying to me earlier, he's uh, he's got the settings right. He's got the Webster killer settings. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly he's got the Webster killer settings. We'll see, Rob, but, uh, yeah, he's showing a good form at the moment. Number three, uh, Klaus Klaffenbach. We've seen him follow Webster around at... Monza, for example, he was tailing Webster, and uh, I've, I've heard since that uh, he would have easily taken him in the last laps if, he, uh, if Webster's engine hadn't expired. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. And there again, Steve Webster showing his nose uh, to Tom Hanks. Tom will know he's there now. He'll be watching his pit signals, and he'll... There, what a move! That's a slingshot move from Steve Webster, but he can't hold it into Brooklyn's. He tried through Priory, went late and wide, cut back on the inside, but then into Brooklyn's, he had too much corner speed and went too deep. Yeah, the problem is he loses drive, and uh, yeah, good effort from Steve uh, Steve Webster. He'll be watching Tom Hanks, but he's also going to watch Klaus Klappenbach. Klappy would have had the best position in the house to see what went on with Webster there, and uh, it's rare for Klappy to see Webster make a mistake. He sits behind him a lot in these races. Yeah, he does, and uh, he'll be watching, and he'll be smiling, and uh, I think... At some stage, we're going to see a move from uh, Mr. Klaffenbach as well. Here's the replay. Webster, deep. Look at the speed he's got. The speed differential over Hanks. But then under brakes, can't pull it up in time into Brooklyn's. Runs deep. Look at Paul Woodhead trying to keep that chair wheel down, but can't do it. Webster cracks the throttle to turn. Big black lines from Webster too. That is very, very unusual from Steve Webster. Everything goes by the book, but... That tells you how much Steve Webster's trained at the moment. Absolutely. Of course, these machines, if they're not turning left, you have to crack the throttle, spin the rear wheel, and uh, get the machine sliding sideways to, to keep the chair wheel from lifting up into the air. Yamaha of Tom Hanks, who almost got two extra 
Well, all, look, all looks very simple, Rob. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Here's the move from Webster. It's into the back, into the veil there. He's gone under brakes. This time the brakes have worked properly and he's been able to pull down. But Hanks around the outside. Hanks is very, very aggressive on the exit out of the veil. Tom Hanks going round the uh, eight times world champion, yeah? Tom Hanks uh, knows no masters. Tom is out there to win the race. And yet, a good move, and I don't think we've seen the end of Mr. Hanks yet. No, in pit lane the other day, Brian uh, Ditchfield from Houghton Fabrications uh, was saying to Tom's dad, uh, so you didn't even teach him the word slow. <laughs> yeah, Tom Hanks, uh, uh, you've got to admire a young Tom. He puts a lot of rubber down on the circuit, and he puts a lot of effort into it. And we're going to see uh, Mr. Hanks very shortly. I'm predicting he's a future world champion. Yes, well, there's a few out there, uh, world champions, that is. Uh, in the leading pack, we've got Webster eight times, Clathmott one time and Abbott one time. So uh, ten world champions in the leading five there and uh, probably two future world champions, Hanks and Steinhausen. Yeah, difficult, Hanks and Steinhausen. Who's going to be the, work, the first of the two? Uh, I think I'm predicting Tom Hanks at the moment. Steinhausen for me. Yeah, <laughs> you would say that, Rob. Steinhausen leading at the at the moment there. He's uh, put in a two-minute lap time, the lap before this one. Slowed it back down to a 201, but consistently high two minutes and uh, low 201. So uh, Steinhausen just comfortable out there. I'll tell you what it is, Rob. We can go back and see uh, the, what the pedigree is and how many times the fathers have won the world championships. And yes, Steinhausen is in front at the moment. Webster catching Steinhausen. He'll be putting the smooth moves through Beckett's and Maggots there, uh, making up those hundreds of seconds and putting the move on out the back of the circuit. Oh, what a tremendous move there. Draft and overtake, yeah. But, yes, yeah, Steinhausen again shouting at him. Steinhausen looks to come back. He's on the outside. Webster's seen him, pulls across. That long lens shot makes it hard to see. <laughs> Truly professional. Uh, the machine's not handling very well at the moment on uh, Steve Webster's machine. And unfortunately, York Steinhausen couldn't get it past him. But I think York is going to draft him and have another go at him. Yes, out of the veil there, down the straight. Uh, here's a replay. Webster, Steinhausen, Klaffenbach and Abbott there. Back to the action. Webster's pulled a bit of a break there from Steinhausen. Hank's thrown... No, doesn't do it through Priory. He's seen Webster do that to him two laps in a row. Couldn't do it on Steinhausen. I'll tell you what it is, Rob. We've got two of the young guns, the new, uh, the new superstars of uh, sidecar racing, Tom Hanks and York Steinhausen battling, and we can see some action here. Look at the new chicane. Here's the lead-up to it. A bit of a right-hander. Watch Paul Woodhead over at the last minute. Chair wheel in the air. It turns through 110 degrees back on itself, and then a right-hander onto the straight. Tough work for passengers. So Webster leads Steinhausen, 0.8 of a second behind from Hanks, Klaffenbach and Abbott, the leading group of five. Then back to Van Gils, the Dutch team, Jockskeen, Rocher, Philp and Houtsey now in 10th position having taken gap. Yeah, good drive from Jockskeen in 7th place. Jock always consistently in the uh, first five or six and yeah, he's putting the effort in this weekend and I think we could even see Jock climb a little higher, yep. Tom Hanks there drifting the machine through Beckett's just absolutely on the pace the front end is just drifting across there he waits for it to catch and then turns action man Tom Hanks is action man sometimes it pays sometimes it doesn't but I think we're going to see Tom Tom Hanks has not finished yet Klaffenbach uh, doing the waiting brief there in fourth place. He's going to take another couple of laps and come through, or not. Into the veil takes Hanks. So Klaffenbach, seeing Webster out in front, will have to get through everyone and go chasing after Webbo again. I'll Hanks fighting back. I'll tell you what we're seeing here, Rob. We're seeing experience overcome the, the youthfulness and uh, the exuberance and uh, the power and everything else. And I've seen uh, the, the first one and two, Webster and uh, Klaffenbach, now using their experience and I'm going to see uh, the world champion who is in fifth place at the moment I think we'll see a bit of action from Steve Abbott he'll weigh the situation up and then he'll make his move he's right on the back of Hanks there but Webster out in front has pulled a big gap I think we'll see a sub two minute lap here look at the gap oh we can't see Webster at the minute but we'll see him over the line after this final chicane there it was the gap back to Steinhausen in second place 
Webster has been very, very smooth on that lap. Big gap over Steinhausen now. Steinhausen with a gap from Klaffenbach. Hanks falling back a little and Abbott will soon be taking him. A 159.4 from Webster. Half a second quicker than anyone else so far in this race. Yeah, I'll tell you what's happening here, Rob. The world champion, uh, ex-world champion, sorry, Steve Webster, MBE. Steve will be looking at his pit board. He'll know exactly where everybody is. And uh, he'll be putting, as per usual, a couple of quick laps in. We'll see a couple of seconds gap. And then you'll see Steve Webster maintain that throughout the race. Yes, Webster, very, very smooth through Beckett's there. Uh, Steinhausen and Klaffenbach and Hanks all losing the front as they're heading through that right-hander on full noise. Yeah, we're going to see there. I've just got a feeling, Rob, looking at this race as it's going now, with 6 of 16 gone, that uh, Steve Webster's going to make a move. Uh, sorry, Steve Abbott's going to make a move rather shortly. Well, he has, uh, hasn't got past Hanks yet, and Hanks has dropped off to the back of Klaffenbach, so they've lost the toe from the battle for second place. So there'll have to be a couple of quick laps, a couple of uh, smooth laps to get uh, Steve Abbott past Hanks and then up to the second and third. Yeah, over there we've got Webster, Steinhausen, Klaffenbach, Hanks, Abbott, Van Gill, Skeen, Rocher, Filt and Alsenberger. So, yeah, it's looking good at the moment, but I think... I'm looking at it that Steve Abbott is going to make a move on Hanksy shortly. That's what I'm predicting anyway. OK, we've got Ian Guy in pit lane. Have you got someone from Tom Hanks' team out in Fabrications there, Ian Guy? Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, down here in pit lane with Brian Ditchfield of Houghton Fabrications. Brian, uh, Tom and Phil started off really well, but they seem to be uh, dropping back a little bit now. They had a nasty spill this morning in qualifying. Do you think that's, uh, that's slowing them down at the moment? Yeah, it, it's possible. I mean... The class that he had certainly knocked him about a little bit. Uh, Tom got a little bit of a bang to the head and Phil Burns his shoulder as he slid down the track. Um, the bike's looking good. Uh, they ride him well, they're young enough. Um, but I don't honestly believe in tactics. OK, well, watch out and see what happens. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Ian Guy in pit lane and uh, Brian Ditchfield there explaining a little bit about the problems that uh, Phil will be suffering from with that burn after the... Uh, bit of the accident this morning. Yeah, I really think what we should do is go back to Ian, because Ian has raced at, uh, at Grand Prix for quite a while. He's done several uh, Grand Prix here. And Ian, just a quick one, how tough is it at uh, the Grand Prix at Silverstone in this temperature? Uh, it's, it's, it's incredibly tough. Your fitness levels need to be 100% uh, to compete at the front, and I think that's, that's showing with uh, Tom Hanks and Paul Biggs at the moment. They're not 100% off this morning, and they're just not able to hang on to that uh, leading pace. Thanks, Ian. Back to the action now. Webster with 2.2 seconds now from Steinhausen. Klaffenbach will be looking for a way through. He's right on the back of Steinhausen now. A second back to Hanks and Abbott right on him. So, uh, yeah, there will be a move from Steve Abbott, I think, in the next lap or two. Norman Burgess, you'll back me up on that. Yeah, I'm backing this one. I've been saying this for about four laps now, but I do feel that uh, Abbott is go He's not going to allow the young gun... Uh, yeah, it looks like a bit of a gap there, Rob, but uh, yeah, Abbott will uh, keep trying away. The Derbyshire Wiley, Derbyshire Fox will press away, uh, and in fifth place, he'll not be happy with fifth, fifth place, I'm sure. But uh, yesterday he had a water pump problem, which uh, the second qualifying, he couldn't, uh, he did one lap, came in, water pump was broken, uh, so they had to fix that. Could this be a resurgence of that problem? I don't think so, Rob, he did about a lap. Uh, the temperature rose, he pulled in, and then he did another lap, the temperature rose, and he pulled in again. No, I think if it's a water pump problem, uh, we'd see that more or less straight away, especially at this temperature. Maybe what we're seeing is Tom Hanks improving. Hanks last lap did a two minute point four, and uh, that's a fairly quick lap. That's uh, at least a second quicker than his qualifying. So Hanks might have learned a few things following world champion Klaus Klaffenbach uh, of 2001, world champion, around. Uh, looks like Tom Hanks has caught up again. Hanks with a 59.9. He's the only the second team to get under two minutes so far. Yeah, looking at the uh, top speeds there, Rob. 2.49 for Webster, 2.38 for Steinhausen, uh, 2.56 for Claffey, uh, Hanks on 2.41, and Abbott on a 2.43. Uh. 2.56 for Klaffenbach. He's obviously getting a big slipstream off of Jörg Steinhausen there because on his own, he could only pull about 2.45, so 11 kilometres an hour from slipstream alone. 
Yeah, that's what we call in the trade a, a good toll. And uh, yeah, 2.56. I mean, he's nearly seven uh, kilometers per hour faster than anybody else. Out the back of the circuit here, heading down the hill into the Vale. Steinhausen and Hopkinson heads pop up under brakes. You see Christian Parts are on with Klaffenbach just gently move across. Here with Steinhausen, it's Trevor Hopkinson hanging right over the side. They get to the straight, the passengers just kneel down into the passenger platform, hang out for the left-hander through Abbey, and then move gently across under the bridge. A lot of hard work, a lot of delicate work for the passengers here at Silverstone. Very critical, the passenger at Silverstone. Uh, you've either got to be there or you're going to slow the, uh, the complete outfit down. And you'll find that the top passengers, you look at Partzer, uh, you look at uh, Woodhead, you look at the rest of them, they're all professional passengers, which give the driver lots of confidence and lots of speed. Yes, it's not about moving quickly, it's about moving slowly, smoothly, being in the right place at the right time every single lap. Absolutely, Rob, you've got to be at the right place at the right time. And that is the combination of a perfect driver and passenger. Yes, uh, I rather like uh, Jamie Biggs myself as uh, one of the best passengers in the world. Always, you don't see him down the straights through the left-handers. He's gazing at his knees. Jamie who? You never see, actually, Jamie on the, the straights. The man disappears. Klaffenbach round Steinhausen. Klaffenbach into Maggots there. Just must have got a much better run and has taken Jörg Steinhausen for second place so far. So, Klaus Klaffenbach, it's uh, midpoint in the race. Klaus Klaffenbach, Christian Parzer will be going after Webber. Here's the replay. Slipstream down the straight. Into turn one. Has just taken him there through turn one. Will he run wide through here? How did he make that move stick? No, I'll tell you what, it was, that was a classic draft pass. It's dead simple. All he did, or it sounds very simple anyway. He just followed him, uh, took the draft off him, and as soon as he hit the brakes, left the brakes a little late and in the inside. Sounds dead simple. Steinhausen fighting back there. Couldn't make the move into the Vale this time and uh, maybe losing a bit of distance by taking that corner on the inside. Yes, you can see Claffy has stretched out from Steinhausen, but Hanks is right there behind. I think uh, Tom Hanks at the moment is, uh, as long as his engine keeps going, because Tom has not been known as the kindest bloke in the world on his engines, I think Tom Lowe making a move, looking on the inside of uh, Steinhausen there. Ah! Well, the excitement's getting to Norman Burgess in commentary here. Tom Hanks putting moves up the inside, round the outside, and uh, Steinhausen has been able to fend him off. Take a moment to collect your thoughts there, Norman, as we uh, go back to this battle. Steinhausen is really pushing that front. They've caught back up to Claffy again. Forgive me on that one, Rob, but it's so exciting. But we've actually got there York Steinhausen and Tom Hanks, the two action men, the two young men of sidecar racing, the two upcoming stars, and they're having a proper go at the moment. Two different lines, as you see, through the right-hander there. Uh, and we're going to see, I think, another move from Tom. Yes, Tom Hanks should take a lap or two to settle down after all of that, I think, uh, a lot like my fellow commentator, uh, Klaus Klaffenbott. Look at Christian Parzer, grabs the handhold down the bottom, the fingers go in, shuts the eyes as he puts his head down. Different style from Steinhausen Hopkinson and a big slide from Hanks. He's well on the throttle there. This is teamwork. This is teamwork at the best. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't like to be paying uh, Tom Hanks' his tire bills at the moment. Uh, Tom, he'll put rubber down where he can, and, yes, uh, we've got Webster leading, Klaffenbach second, Steinhausen, Hanks, Abbotts, Van Gills, Rocher, Skeen, Phil and Minge. Lap traffic there, that's uh, Barry and Jane Fleury as Tom Hanks tries to take advantage up the inside. Can't do it on Steinhausen, but is fighting every corner. He should uh, possibly take a bit of a deep breath and make one corner on his lap the place to pass. Tommy's action man, as I keep repeating myself, Tommy's action man. And yes, if he can make a move anywhere, Tom will have a go. Chris Founds and Hayden right there uh, with a retirement. That won't be good for the local guy, Chris Founds. He's worked very, very hard to get the machine on the track and uh, in front of his home crowd and all his home fans. It, it won't be good for him. No, but uh, that's sidecar racing. Look at this here. <laughs> Tom Hanks, uh, Steinhausen. Oh, what a move. No, Tom, he's not going to, I repeat, not going to give up. Okay, Tom Hanks there in the midst of the action. Bit of a flame out of the exhaust. 
but uh, not much of a move uh, from him at the moment. Uh, Ian Guy, have you got Chris Founds in pit lane for me? Yeah, guys, I'm here with a disappointed uh, Chris Founds. Chris, what was the problem? Just went flat in, second lap onwards, down the big fast straights, and I guess it got worse as we got round further around the track. Lap by lap, it's just getting worse and worse, and it's just a pain in the ass, and I'm fed up with it. It's been like that the last couple of meetings now. I thought we cured it at Oshersleben, but the bloody thing's come back to haunt us again. I'm not very happy. Disappointment, Chris, but good time to around the corner, I'm sure. Ian, just a quick question, uh, temperature-wise, can you tell us as an experienced Grand Prix runner, what problems does temperature uh, actually cause? OK, we'll get back to Ian Guy in a minute, uh, but Chris Found's obviously very, very disappointed having the engine uh, expire on him in such a way uh, at his home Grand Prix. Back to the action here, Tom Hanks, we saw a replay a minute of them of them coming out of that final chicane, absolutely opposite lock on the taps, smoking the rear tyre. I would actually say they uh, will have bolt tyres at the end of this, but uh, they will, they've got it bolt tyres to start with. OK, getting back to the action, Klaus Klaffenbach uh, seems to be holding up Steinhausen a bit. Claffy with a 2.015 uh, the last few laps. A bit slower than the pace we've seen um, leading up to about lap nine, where we saw some uh, two-minute lap times. So uh, Klaus Klaffenbach might be slowing everyone down so he can have a, a big go at Webster in the last few stages. Webster's slowing nobody down, and uh, he's 5.5 seconds in front at the moment, so we're seeing the action for an enough proper scrap for second place and yet uh, number three Klaus Klaffenbach in the lead at the moment but I think Jörg Steinhausen and Tom Hanks uh, have got different things to say about that one. Steinhausen attacking again lap 11 of 16 completed so this is lap 12 Steinhausen really menacing the back of Klaus Klaffenbach through Brooklands I'm going to say there Rob uh, these two are probably uh, slowing one another down I would think, and uh, we're going to see Tom Hanks come back into this one. Jörg Steinhausen there knelt up out of the machine a minute ago. That's uh, a little bit strange. Uh, he has had a history of problems with his legs, and I wonder if that's something to do with it. Yeah, what's happened with Jörg Steinhausen? He's actually changing gear now with his right foot. I'm breaking... No, I've got it wrong. He's actually breaking now with the right foot, and he's changing gear with the left foot because of his back problem. Uh, he's tried air changes, he's tried everything. And now he's actually switched over the braking with the uh, gear change. And yet, yeah, because of this uh, slip disc or whatever he's got, causing him loads of problems in the Grand Prix. Uh, but it looks like it's working. Yeah, so Steinhausen chasing Klaffenbach still. 0.7 of a second last time as they came over. There, look at the front end of that thing, just understeer, underpower through that right turn. It is full on gas there, top gear and they are just pushing the front. Yeah, what's happening here is they're actually using the uh, the hard Yokohama tyres. Uh, they've been using them all weekend, and what happens is the tyres last, uh, but they do suffer from understeer. Let's look at the replay here of Steinhaus, and look at the front end of that machine. He's got it pointed in one direction, it's going in one totally different. Yeah, the whole plot is uh, actually drifting out with the, just with pure speed. And that's where the sidecar tyre is so important to keep the machine on track. It actually steers from the sidecar tyre. There's no actual control of the steering. It's just that it's slightly turned towards the front wheel. So through a right hand, the extra pressure on the sidecar wheel keeps the machine on track. Yeah, what's happening now, Rob, is we're, we're three quarters of the way through the race. Uh, lap 12 or 16 uh, with uh, Steve Webster, Klaffenbach, Steinhausen, Hanks, Abbott, Van Gilles, Roger Philp, Skeen and Mingay. And it looks like I was totally wrong before with that slipstreaming thing from Klaus Klaffenbach as we see Menge and Bedolt. Bit of a kick to the machine, so I think that would be uh, a problem there. Uh, passenger looks like he's limping a little bit. Uh, That's a little bit of French temperament, I think, Rob. And it uh, looks like they've uh, got it buried in a um, gravel trap somewhere around the circuit. But uh, as I was saying before, Klaus Klaffenbach, without a slipstream, 256 kilometres an hour. Yeah, he's pumping some speed out the uh, out the Yamaha machine now. Uh, his nearest uh, is 249, 256k, lot of speed. So the battle for second still rages here. Klaffenbach and Steinhausen, half a second different. Another half a second back to Hanks. But Abbott has had a problem, and uh, he's in fifth place, 10 seconds behind. 
I don't know what's wrong with Abbott at the moment. He's uh, had uh, water pump problems, he's had fuel pump problems, he's had tyre problems, he's had suspension problems, he's had steering problems, and I think they've all come together in one go again, Rob. Uh, it's uh, not good for the current world champions, Steve Abbott and Jamie Biggs. Here's another replay, Klaus Klaffenbach drifting the machine, but Steiny, look at the amount of pressure he's putting on that sidecar tyre. Absolutely full-on throttle there from Steinhausen. I'm just glad I'm not paying his tire bill, Rob. Trevor Hopkinson doing the job over the back of the machine, keeping the weight onto the rear. But uh, when Steiny flicks it to the right that quickly, there's nothing that the passenger can do to help. No, it's just a pure speed manoeuvre. Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead, number four this year. They'll be looking for that number one plate again. They've, uh, they haven't won a world title now for a couple of years, and uh, Steve is missing it. I think what we're going to see there, Rob, is uh, five and a half seconds in front about uh, from Klaus Klaffenbach, and uh, Steve Webster is an avid reader of his pit board, and we'll see a five and a half second, and it'll go on like that. Everybody think Webster's slowed down, but what he's actually doing is reading his pit board. Oh, and there's an accident there. Uh, that's uh, Team Ready Mix, uh, is it? Yes, that looks like uh, Andy Peach and Dudley Tomlinson uh, having a crash at the final chicane, lying on the track there. Uh, yes, it's a definite problem there. The machine has gone upside down and is upside down in the chicane. Yellow flags waving, marshals everywhere. Don't turn it over like that. Use the handles on the side. Thank you, marshals. And that looks like uh, Andy Peach is OK. Here's a replay of the aftermath of that incident. Look in the foreground of the picture on the left. We'll see the machine upside down. Paul Woodhead going out to passenger. Webster grabs an extra foot full of brakes and there it is going across. Dudley Tomlinson jumping through the air. Uh, that's a big crash there. Yeah, but what a good drive from uh, Steve Webster. Both OK, no problem. Psycho racing is uh, not a problem uh, with them two boys. Flip it over. But I've got to say, Steve Webster saw what happened, whipped quickly, changed the gear, moved inside, and yeah, missed Dudley, and uh, well done, Steve Webster. So that's uh, bad for the second of the Team Ready Mix, Mix entries. Of course, the leading team for Team Ready Mix is in second position, Klaus Klaffenbach and Christian Parzer, and they've done a two-minute lap time, two minutes point eight, and Webster obviously slowed down by that incident, lost half a second there. I don't think it'll matter in the outcome, but uh, yeah, Klaffenbach, a two-minute lap time. Good drive from Steve Webster there. I mean, it, it could be, really, uh, when you see such an incident, rather catastrophic, but it tells you that Steve Webster knows exactly what's going on. He's looking well ahead, and, yeah, well done. I've got to say again, well done, Steve Webster. Yes, well, it could have happened in a different spot, and he might have had to go the wrong way around the chicane. We could have had a totally different race. Yeah, Peachy, he, uh, he puts a lot of effort into his racing, and sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. It hasn't paid off in this one, but uh, Peachy, ex-passenger, new Grand Prix driver, he's got all this. This is all part of growing up. Yes, he has the experience over 20 years as a passenger, and uh, now he's learning a different uh, way of looking at things. Back to our leading pack, uh, Webster out in front, 4.7 seconds. The final lap, Klaffenbach second place, Steinhausen third place, Hanks fourth place, crossing the line. I think Tom Hanks will be putting in a blinder for the second half of this lap. He will be putting in a big move. I'll tell you what it is, Rob, this is a commentator's nightmare because now we're going to see Tom Hanks make all the moves in the book. Everyone's struggling through these turns at the end of the race. The tyre's very, very hot, a bit low on rubber. Oh, look at Tom Hanks drifting, three-wheel drifting through Maggots and Beckett's. Wow. <laughs> oh, that man has still got rubber on his tyres, I really don't know. But we're going to see some action now from Tom Hanks, I'm sure. That was a huge, a huge amount of corner speed he was trying to hold, couldn't hold it, and just three-wheel drifted across the term. And Klaffenbach seems to have it uh, almost under control in front of Steinhausen, as against Hanks, who seems to have it all out of control behind Steinhausen. Rob, I'm leaving this last lap to you. OK, through the veil, all the pressure on me now, and Steinhausen in second place. Webster looks like he's doing pretty well. Just coming up to lap Richard Gatt there. A bit of a gap there for the, between the second, third and fourth battle. Steinhausen looks like he's uh, not close enough to Klaffenbach. Hanks looks like he's not close enough to Steinhausen, but we've seen Hanks before. We'll see, Klaff uh, we'll see Webster into this last complex through Priory towards Brooklands. 
I might say Steve Webster's doing a little bit of showboating there, Rob. Well, the chair wheel up, the back wheel spinning. Steve Webster's entitled to it, leading this race for two thirds of the race. And uh, the cheers from the crowd, uh, we can hear them through. So uh, very popular win for Steve Webster coming up. Through the final chicane, Paul Woodhead grabs on for the last time. The power goes down. And we'll see the checkered flag come out for Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead taking the win at Silverstone. The battle for second coming through. And we'll see who it is. Is it Klaffenbach? Klaffenbach, Steinhausen and Hanks. No change on that last lap. A lot of excitement from Hanks, but no change in the placings. Wow, who would be a passenger there? I mean, no, there must be some tension there on the last lap. Yeah, these uh, passengers, I don't know what they're doing out there on some hot days. Yeah, they uh, made some effort there. And, uh, yep, it finished as, uh, as you predicted, Rob, there. Webster, Klaffenbach, Steinhausen, Hanks and uh, Abbott in fifth place look at steve webster there over the grass uh looking now for you will see him put it into the right under yet yeah, not an understeer there with the uh, steve webster he's got it all under control yes yeah, just a slight bit of movement through the front suspension as they go over the bumps between the change of, of tracks but uh steve webster in control very low in the machine uh has been setting this bike up this particular chassis has been setting this up for over two years now very very happy with it the suzuki engine he's saying he's got the new engine from suzuki gb and uh, everything's perfect rob can i say the factory suzuki engine he's uh, now getting big support from uh, suzuki and it's showing there it's paying off and steve webster's put a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of world championships into this one and if you're going to sponsor anybody uh, and you're a suzuki factory owner uh, steve webster is the man to put it into well this uh, he had his 22nd pole position uh, in a row today and uh, yeah he'll be uh, 54 wins 54 wins for Steve Webster just checking the paperwork there but uh, how about that for a record 54 wins but 22 consecutive uh, pole positions that's 22 Rolex watches is that right Rob I'm not sure of the brand uh, but uh, 22 in a row since Phillip Island in 2001 when Jörg Steinhausen had pole position but the race wasn't held because of that atrocious weather but uh, every single time since then even if he hasn't finished the race uh, due to engine problems, which we saw last year, always had pole position. Dare I say he's a pole position uh, specialist, Rob? Yeah, it would seem that way. Waving to the crowd as they wander around on the side, on the warm down lap there. Done this so many times before, and big wave to the crowd. Listen to all the horns hooting in the background. Home crowd cheering on their champion. He was uh, always going to be a winner looking at the uh, qualifying. Uh, but how we did it in uh, five and a half seconds, 5.3 seconds. Uh, he was watching the pit board. He knew exactly uh, where Claffy, Steinhausen and Hanks were, and Steve Abbott. And uh, Steve, he makes it look so easy, Rob. Yes, uh, he's very, uh, trades very hard for uh, someone of his experience, uh, even still. And uh, Paul Whithead as well, every night in the gym, just to make sure he's a winner. Good job we didn't have his father in the uh, studio this weekend. I, I don't think we'll be doing that after the Monza experience. Uh, going to the uh, the race, Russia and Harney in seventh place. Another good result from them. Uh, they were fourth in the championship before. This is more solid points for them. Philp and Yandel uh, with a good finish. Skeen and Miller, they were hoping for a great finish, and they got it. Yeah, 12th position there from Duncan Henry, uh, the wild card. Done very well, uh, Duncan. Uh, lots of pressure on him. Only a wild card, he tells me. But yeah, 12th position, perfect. Yes, and Woodard as well, uh, second wild card in 13th position. So uh, two wild cards finishing in the points at Silverstone. So Park Ferme gets a little busy as we get the top three teams in there. Congratulations all round. There's Mick Webster and Steve Webster there. Mick Webster, we had Mick in the studio in Monza, do you remember? Uh, we brought him in, and we interviewed him, and immediately uh, Steve broke down. We haven't seen him since, Rob. Yes, uh, he wasn't too happy after... Uh, well, actually, Steve wasn't too happy. Mick Webster um, didn't mind at all. He was happy to talk to his fans. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, as we were talking to Mick Webster in the studio, talking about the Suzuki engine, it expired on track. Rob, the word is fun, not fans. OK, the standings now. Klaus Klaffenbach and Christian Parts are still leaning on 81 points. Webster closing the gap there, 75 points. 
Steve Abbott, 49 points. Webster with three wins now, and Klaffenbach with that uh, memorable win at Monza. Uh, Roche has maintains fourth position there with 43. Van Gils, Steinhausen, Hanks, Morrissey, and Philp with 25 points. That's good points for Bill Philp in ninth place. And Jock Skeen finally getting um, some points to back up uh, the Valencia result. Billy Garros from Sweden, 19 points. That's great too. And uh, Duncan Henry, the wild card, uh, 11 points. He's had two wild cards, 11 yeah, points. Yeah, I can see the championship tightening up. All, every meeting we have now, Rob, uh, from the walk away uh, originally at the start of the season, we can now see the championship tightening up. And I think at, this, at the end of this season, we are going to see some championship. Well, we've had it before over the last four or so years, Klaffenbach and Webster. Uh, various wins, various problems, and uh, going up and down in points, swapping the title, and, yeah, Klaffenbach leads uh, at the moment by six points, but uh, that could all change in, t in one week time at Manzano. Yeah, Cla with six points uh, only between us. Yeah, Claffy's now looking over his shoulder, and uh, Steve Webster's uh, now looking at Claffy, and we're going to see uh, some championship to come. The podium at Silverstone. Uh, Jörg Steinhausen and Trevor Hopkinson come out. A great third place for them. Good solid points. Jörg, after many, many engine failures this year, has got some good points. Yeah, good Anglo-British tie up there, uh, Rob. The Austrians, Klaffenbach and Parzer. A familiar second position for them. Still got that goatee beard, uh, Rob. I don't actually know what uh, Klaus Klaffenbach's doing with the goatee beard, but, yeah, I'm sure he's going to be a movie star one day. Well, we did talk about his movie career last time, uh, as I recall, but uh, he hasn't confirmed those suspicions. There we have uh, Steve Webster, the winner. Steve Webster uh, looking now as cool and calm as he hasn't actually been on a motorcycle. Don't believe it. And uh, trophies presented there. Uh, looks like Jamie Whittam on uh, on the podium there. You have to say Jamie Whittam from Yorkshire. OK, from Yorkshire, but he's OK. Yeah, jo Jamie presenting the prizes there. Uh, now going to Klaus Klappenbach and uh, Christian Parzer. And ably assisted by Miss Superside, Sarah there. And uh, that's a tough competition we've had today for Miss Superside as well. I think I should have entered that one myself, Rob. I don't think she would have had any problems at all there. And uh, there we have the trophy presentation. Could you call that through, please, Norman? Yeah, there we have uh, Steve Webster. Thanks a lot for that one, Rob. Yeah, uh, I, what I actually meant was to enter the competition, and I'm sure I would have won it, but there we have the winner, uh, Steve Webster, uh, receiving all the garlands. What he's going to do now is receive the champagne and... Uh, there's Steve Father, Mick. Uh, Mick, we haven't seen in the commentary this week. Yes, uh, we finally found him. He's on the podium accepting the manufacturer's trophy for uh, Castrol Suzuki. Mick, a uh, very proud, proud father of uh, Steve Webster. He's followed his racing career all the way through. And uh, what a moment. So a great win there for Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead. Steinhausen with the early jump on the champagne and uh, unfortunately uh, Sarah will be having to do some washing tonight to Miss Superside champagne covering. Rob, I've got to say every, I say this after every meeting, what a waste of champagne. Unfortunately for you, Steve Abbott isn't on the podium, so I think you'll be missing out later on tonight, Norman. We'll do a bottle of beer, Rob. Sounds like a plan. So Steve Webster uh, collects the trophy Mick there, uh, working out what's going on. We're having a few photos, I think, and um, oh, Bert Steinhausen there, Superside uh, manager at the moment, having a bit of a joke with Christian Parcher. They're old friends. Oh, yeah, Bernie. Bernie's uh, what we call in the trade, very good for the crack. And yes, he, he's a Superside order and uh, puts a lot of effort and a lot of time into this. And uh, yeah, this is uh, what Bern actually worked for. 
So while we wait for a couple of photos, um, although we could be waiting for the manufacturer's anthem, uh, that could be the delay we're waiting for. Yeah, I think Mick Webster uh, came up as a team manager and uh, accepted the accolades and then uh, disappeared. But I do think the uh, manufacturer's national anthem will be next. Or we could just have more champagne. Looking like it. So, with the photographs done, uh, we're going to uh, just prepare for some interviews and hopefully we'll get to hear what's, uh, what's been going on through the race. Steve Webster, what he did for those first five or six laps and how Klaffenbach uh, came back. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Ian Guy interviewing the first, second and third because Ian is an experienced Grand Prix uh, passenger. Uh, sorry, my apologies, Ian. Uh, Ex-Grand Prix driver will have all the questions and I'm looking forward to this one. Excellent. So uh, the heat is still on here at Silverstone. We've uh, got a clear track now, but uh, all the machines will be in pit lane, except those in Parc Ferme, and maybe a couple scattered around the track. We're going to pack up for another week. Uh, let's have a look at the highlights of the track. Uh, the race, Webster didn't get a good start. Steinhausen and Hanks went around him. Steinhausen very aggressive early, but not as aggressive as Hanks around the outside there. This tight chicane. That uh, caused a bit of problems later in the race. Webster trying to put the move on Hanks, went too deep. There we see pit lane, and Webster finally getting that move back on Hanks. Enjoyable race from pit lane there. And Hanks and Biggs concentrating very hard through Beckett's. The slides they had were amazing. Paul Woodhead trying to keep the wheel down through the turns. I don't think we have call him Mr. Hanks anymore. We'll call him Mr. Aggression, I think. Excellent, and uh, Klaus Klaffenbach and Christian Parts are fought through to second. Here's one of the moves they put on Steinhausen for that second place. Excellent move through turn one. Steinhausen got Hanks. Hanks tried to get back on a Steinhausen, couldn't quite do it. But look at this for a slow-mo through that chicane. Chair wheel up, then down. Passengers move straight across the platform. Hanks was so exciting through Maggots and Beckets. Excellent. And there's the crash at the end. That's Dudley Tomlinson. He could almost see his, his house from there, but uh, lying on the track there. Well done, Mr. Webster. Well done, Mr. Webster, for not getting involved in that accident. Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead take the win there. Checkered flag goes through, and Klaus Klappenbach, Christian Parts, Steinhausen, Hopkinson, and Hanks and Biggs for fourth place. Tightly fought race that. Ian Guy, can we have the interviews, please?
Thanks, Ian Guy, for those interviews. Klaus Klaffenbach not happy uh, with second, as we hear, but uh, Steve Webster, the master, here he is crossing the line to get the chequered flag. Another win for Steve Webster at uh, Silverstone. Here he is, the, uh, the hands go up. Very, very happy, Steve Webster. Another race win, 54 in total in his career. What a great career, what a great win for Steve Webster here at Silverstone today. Is he going to make it to 100, Rob? I don't think he will uh, make it to 100, but uh, Mazzano in one week's time, very, very quick transition uh, for Mazzano. We've all got to rush down there. Uh, hopefully the weather will be the same. Thanks to Ian Guy for doing the pit lane. Norman Burgess in commentary. I'm Rob Marta. See you in Mazzano.